national semifinals between North Dakota State and Richmond. A trip to Frisco on the line. Along with the most interesting man in the world, apparently. <laughs> it's not you, it's always Big E, Eric Peterson and Jeff Kolpak. I'm Dom Izzo, as we are here again, boys, fourth consecutive year with the Bison play on a Friday night on national television, Jeffrey, for a chance to go back to Texas. I don't know how many people had that picked at the start of the season. Well, it was really a daunting task if you think about yeah. it, especially when Carson Wentz got hurt after the loss of South Dakota. I think this man, even when I thought of it, a tough deal, he's looking a little stiff right now. Right. I don't know if he's uh, really up for a prediction today. Big E, Richmond, we don't know a whole lot about. We'll get into them in our next segment. But off of what Colpack said, when you look back at that game October the 17th when the Bison lost to South Dakota, you're thinking, well, maybe the Bison have to play Thanksgiving weekend. Maybe they might not make the playoffs, and here they are, a game away from going back to Texas. Not only that, but they're probably going to have to travel for the playoffs, yeah. which could have happened until Illinois State got upset by Richmond. But then the other thing, just the unknown of having a uh, redshirt freshman quarterback. You know, everyone knew Easton Stick was a good prospect, but until you get in games, until you get in crunch time situations, you don't know. And Easton Stick has delivered in every every way imaginable you could expect from a freshman. What's also delivered, Jeff, is special teams and defense in this playoff run, accounting for three touchdowns and a safety over the last two weeks to help out the redshirt freshman now, quarterback. Keep in mind today, the Richmond kicker is not Four really good at touchbacks, to okay? So who's going to get a chance to run yeah. one back? Who has to take one out to the house the last two games? Our redshirt freshman. It's been unbelievable how much, how huge that's been to help NDSU get to this point. Well, it's, it's four touchdowns, yeah, Dom. Four that, touchdowns yeah. and a safety. It's something that we thought was lacking in the last year and a half, even though there's been the success. It's where these special teams touchdowns, where these defensive touchdowns. It's something the Bison kind of feasted on when Ryan Smith and Marcus yeah. Williams played on this team. Now they've got that factor back with the defense turning it over, getting a safety, and then Bruce Anderson's emerged as a special teams weapon. Jeff, for the first time in this playoff run, the Bison have actually, the coaching staff have had to prepare for a new opponent. We, they saw Montana. They saw Northern Iowa, obviously. Now we get the first true sense of a national tournament with the Spiders coming to town. But I know they got any issues attention for what they did last week at Illinois State. Yeah, first of all, I think it's too bad that it's taken until it's five <laughs> degrees outside before we really find a new opponent. Yeah. And, it, you know, that's another topic for another day. But make it more of a national tournament, NCAA, instead of all these rematches. But you're right, Richmond, what, is, what does Richmond bring? They bring an explosive running yeah. back. They have a quarterback who's pretty poised. And I think the best tandem they'll see in receivers probably since Montana. C.J. Smith said that earlier this week. He thought if Montana was 1A and 1B, these guys, we'll talk about them in our next segment, what Richmond brings to the table is pretty impressive. Now, with a first-timer here, obviously it goes on set, Big E, that how are they going to adjust to the noise I, will it be as loud as Montana, Northern Iowa? Because I, there was the revenge factor, if you want to say it, against the Grizz, and then obviously the hatred factor against you and I. I mean, we don't know, but I think right this game you got the Frisco factor. You're one step yeah. away from getting back to Texas. It's going to be the last home game for these seniors and this this uh, the senior class, regardless of what happens. I think it's going to be an adjustment, but the two things you got to look at: how long does it take Mitt Richmond to adjust? and how much does it cost them in adjusting? You know, if NDSU doesn't get off to a good start right. and, and Richmond kind of figures out after one quarter, you know, it's going to be a dogfight. But Richmond can't turn the ball over, can't fall behind early, because those are types of things that are able to snowball in the dome, especially in the postseason. How big is that for Richmond, an early start? Remember UNH a couple years ago in that semifinal, they got a Brock Jensen pick six. They led that game. 7 nothing had a chance to go up 10 to nothing. They decided not to get the field goal. You'll remember that and went for it. They had a chance to put some early momentum, and of course, it snowballed after that for the Bison. You know, sometimes I think that's a little overemphasized. Last week, Northern Iowa won the coin toss. Scored the early touchdown. They said to they took the ball, went down, and scored yep. right away 7 0. And you're thinking, okay, things aren't <laughs> going that way. Jeff, your pick's looking pretty good, by the way. But I think over time, I mean, the better team will win over time. Right. I mean, yeah, if Richmond gets off to a good start, you know, it's probably good for them, but I think it's all about halftime adjustments. Well, Northern Iowa wasn't a first-timer either. True. Whether they got off to a great start or a bad start, you think that was going to settle into a slugfest. I'm just saying, if NDSU gets a big play earlier, this crowd gets loud. It, it happened out Montana. Stick scored on that early touchdown run, and it, and it got away from the Grizzlies pretty early in that game after that. Be curious to see how the fans react tonight, as Biggie said, knowing 
a shot to go to Frisco to play the winner of Jacksonville State and Sam Houston State. That game comes up tomorrow uh, in Alabama. The number one seeded Gamecocks with a chance to get some revenge from a game they lost last year in the second round of the SCS playoffs to Sam Houston. Well, Sam Houston, I mean, they end up here every, every year. year. I don't know how, what it is about <laughs> that program, but I think this year it got the benefit of a nice bracket. Yep. And it's been playing well, pretty well lately, uh, you know, and they're, God, they're just, they just, you just can't get rid of them. Casey Keeler's team still alive and playing with a backup quarterback now, Big E. Jeremiah Briscoe is their quarterback who comes, ironically enough, from UAB, program that shut down football, and now he's led his team to within a shot to go back for a fourth time, or third time, excuse me, in five years to the national title. Yeah, they, they've been in two national semifinals yeah. and two national championship games in this four years. Good. If NDSU wasn't on such a big run, it'd be, everyone would be saying, hey, Sam right. Houston State is the team in FCS, so their two programs are traditionally good, and you, and you think in these semifinal situations, that might give either team a little edge, but like Jeff said, it's a long game. The best team is going to win out over the course of 60 minutes. Maybe also, Big, or Big E makes that point to Colback. Sam Houston's done this with two different coaches, much like NDSU did with Willie Fritz gone to Georgia Southern, now Casey Keeler, the guy with the Bearcats. And he's uh, been up and down a little bit, too. There yeah. were times, I think, early in this year where you questioned whether they would you know, make right. it this far. You questioned the Southland schedule. Did. Called it fraudulent, I, I believe. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, and we thought McNeese State would be the team to come That's out of right. there. Then we thought they Not would be Sam the team. Houston. Well, Colby, you always say the other bracket's not very good. How do you know? Colby you, was in. The, you're just Colgate talking on what you, you're talking on what you see. You don't see those teams. How do you know how bad they uh, are? I'm just saying. You saw the bottom half, though, and you know how good the bottom half teams were. Okay. Was not, but how, how do you know? That I'm just saying, Jacksonville State went into Auburn, granted a not great Auburn team, yeah, really and gave them a game. Yeah. That's a pretty good team, in my opinion. But six of the top eight in the RPI or the GPI were in this side in the of the bottom bracket. bracket. Yeah, that just seems totally slighted to me. All right, before we take our first break, does Carson Wentz play today? I think that's still a lot of people want to know what's going on with number 11. I would be really shocked. I mean, I would be really surprised if he did. I think he needs another week or two of yeah. just a lot of practice. That being said, neither Carson Wentz or Ethan Stick were made available to the media this week. Yeah. What do you think of that? I don't think Carson Wentz plays. It, unless they, they get desperate and their offense is really struggling, and then that's probably not a good thing for NDSU. Or maybe if they get a, a lead or it's maybe a kneel down at the end of the game and you have a chance to get him in the game. I, well, situations like that. That's I disagree. About it. I disagree. You only can dress 60 players. You can't dress a guy for ceremonial purposes. What I'm saying if he's like 80 percent and you're going to dress him because he's he's an emergency emergency guy boy that'd be interesting to see we'll see what disagree happen i disagree no, you think he's going to dress i don't think he's going to dress no well, that, well that's what i'm saying if he doesn't dress it's not an issue yeah, i'm right. saying if he does dress they may try to get him in the game just because it's his last home game i'm not saying they're going to dress him just, just to get him in the game boy if he does dress that the intrigue of this game goes through the roof already we'll take our first break we come back a closer look at the Bison opponent tonight, the Richmond Spiders of a great season in the Colonial. Back with more live from the Dome in our Bison Media Blog pregame show right after this. This is your livelihood, and success requires a seed partner that's just as committed as you are. Just like you, we're farmers first, so our values are rooted just as deep, and our goals are just as strong. Our team is ready to hit your fields. So no matter what each growing season brings, we'll get through it together. It's who we are. Thunderseed, first in the field. More plays. More coverage. More sports. Stay ahead of the game. Get your sports fix with Sports Sunday. Sunday nights at 1035. Sports Sunday is brought to you by Nelson Auto Center in Fergus Falls. The specialists are so important because they're the ones that can take your team from average to great. The guys that have their specialized roles and understand them and do them really well, um, those guys are hard to find. And so when you have those guys that are good at what they do and believe in what they're doing, don't care too much about who gets the credit and want to go out and prove something. I think that that is probably the most important ingredient in a successful team. 
Choose the experts. Choose Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Peterson Farm Seed presents Ag Week TV every weekend. Ag News expert Shauna Olson, trusted meteorologist John Wheeler, and the expertise of the entire Ag Week staff will bring you the latest in Ag News, lifestyle, experts, tech, and trends. If it's important news to you, it's important news to us at Ag Week TV. Ag Week TV, delivering the complete ag picture every weekend. Welcome back, everybody. Bison Media Block pregame show live here in the tailgate lights. Cold pack. We've done this for six years. Is this Wofford cold today? This is so Wofford cold. The only thing missing is your bow tie. <laughs> That's good luck. Yeah. We have a tent here, cold pack. There's heat. You got heat. You got a jacket. You got 80 layers of Gore-Tex. I think you'll be fine, dude. George Costanza over here. It is chilly out, though. I think 11 degrees. The wind chill, it's chillier than that. Glad we're playing indoors tonight for this game. Can you imagine if this was an outdoor game? Holy cow. Okay, you're going to have 19,000 people here today. <laughs> How many if it were outdoors? Yeah. Four? I was going to say five. 5,000 yeah, 5, maybe? I agree. It's yeah. five range, maybe six. So the real diehards. The but it'd, it'd be tough. Yes. And for Richmond, they are not prepared to play outside. They're very thankful this game is tonight as the Spiders are here for the first time in school history off a great win last week at Illinois State. We can debate to the cows come home about Illinois State didn't prepare for the game or if they weren't ready for it. Richmond beat them fair and square last week, Jeff. They did beat him, and they beat him at the line of scrimmage. You talk to people who watch the tape a lot, that there was a Richmond offensive line was really good. Yeah. And defensively, they held Copperidge and Roberson to career lows, which is really crazy when you think yeah. about it. And how they do it, they have a read and react defense. And what I mean by that is they don't try to penetrate so much on defense. They have a very low quarterback sack total and very low tackle for lost yardage total. But instead, they stay back, read, and then fill the gaps. I've never seen anything like that before. That's really interesting for what the Bison offensive line, which is used to weighing on, on guys. This is going to be really different for them tonight. It's going to be different. If you look at it, I'm not sure you know, how a power running team will react. Yeah. Will it be better for a power running team or, or will you, you know, how are they going to, how are they going to handle the blocking schemes? Really curious to see how that. I think a lot of times when you do a read option, you have to do that because the read option is based on people crashing and penetrating and getting out of position and almost taking themselves out of the play. So a lot of times if you maybe see an option team like Georgia Southern or, or a, a read option team like Illinois State, yeah. you don't just charge across the line. You saw it with NDSU. I think their DNs kind of scale back a little bit when they played running teams because early in the year we saw when those DNs crash there's some big quarterback runs that NDSU gave up so when NDSU plays running type teams like I think they do similar things maybe not to the extent that Richmond does but I think some of those principles are in there with no surprise from the team from the south they have some tremendous skill players let's start on the outside Biggie at wide receiver Brian Brown Reggie Diggs have combined for a mass amount of touchdowns with Kyle Aletta at quarterback that's uh, obviously for C.J. Smith and Jordan Champion. That's targets 1A and 1B tonight. Reminds you a little bit of Montana with Jamal Jones and Ellis Henderson, that type of thing. Uh, and, and Montana also had third and fourth guys or taller yeah. guys like uh, Diggs is. So it's kind of going to be a mix of what they saw in Montana with maybe a little bit of Northern Iowa in there because you got the running game yeah. with, with Green. So I, I think they've seen elements of that in their first two games, so they'll have to be somewhat prepared. But, you know, we got to see last week, their receivers just made plays. And you go back to that Montana game early near the NDSU loss, NDSU is going to have to win those 50-50 balls because I feel like Richmond's going to throw a few of those today and give the wide receivers a chance to make plays. I think the biggest thing, too, Colpac, last week, they were so successful on third down. Illinois State could not get off the field because Richmond's wide receivers are making some unbelievable catches. Yeah, they, they, they had six completions on third down yeah. that averaged 28 yards. That's crazy. Which, and a lot of those are guys just going yeah. up and making a play. And that's, you know, those 50-50 balls, I talked to C.J. Smith about that earlier this week, and he goes, yeah, we, and they did that a lot to everybody all year. Jacoby Green, maybe the best running back the Bison have seen all year. And I know I, Nico Watson was in that category, and the Bison shut him down. Biggie's already rolling his eyes because I say that. I, I say that every week. You're good but, at rolling your eyes. But Jacoby Green, 21 touchdowns. The Bison have ran for 28 as a team. He had four touchdowns last week. Yeah, and he's had 1,200 yards in the last seven games alone. That's crazy. A couple 200-yard rushing efforts. 
He's 5'9", 190, but he's really slithery. And he's hard yeah. to tackle. He's able to avoid the, you know, the first uh, contact a lot of times. If you look at him, and especially in the last seven games, he's run with a lot of power, much like King Frazier. You look at, where does he stack up in your mind? You've been with the team all year on the running backs that they've seen. Because obviously Zenner's not here. You look, I look right at Jody Webb and Martin Ruiz from Youngstown State with this guy right in the mix. Well, it reminds me maybe a little bit of Coppridge, that stocky yeah. build, very slithery, and not exactly like this. I think Jody Webb's more of that just straight speed guy. Obviously has moves, but I don't think he's quite in that category of speed. He reminds me a little more of a Coppridge. He's kind of elusive. And like you said, in general, you know, you haven't had that top end back week in, week out like last year, which was Zenner, yeah. you know, David, David Johnson. Johnson. But Tyvis Smith was a very good yes. back, but a much different back. The 6'2", 230-pound back who's more going to run you over than try to slither around you. It should be a great matchup. The question at quarterback, though, is this, because Kyle Laletta left the game with an injury last week. He did come back in, but that's obviously a huge question mark going forward for Richmond is how he performs in tonight's game. Well, in this day and age, in this day and age, when it comes to quarterbacks, I mean, in injuries, we really don't know, do we? No, we do not. I mean, it's not the NFL where you have to list guys <laughs> questionable, out, or probable. Right. I mean, I think everybody's questionable. Probable. What's Carson Wentz today? <laughs> probable. Probable. Probable for yeah. tonight's game. We'll take a break. We come back. Our keys to the game as we get closer to NDSU and Richmond. We're live outside the dome on the Media Blog pregame show on WDAY.com and Inforum.com. For over 60 years, our focus has been you. A growing community needs a new source that grows with them. And you found that source in WDAY. Good evening, everyone. Our 6 p.m. newscast has been with you night after night. When the city comes to life or when news happens, you'll know. Dana Mock, Kirsten Keeley, out in the community, behind the desk. This had no major issues with users viewing offensive material. Two anchors you can trust. When the news hits, there's only one source to turn to. WDAY, the news leader. Peterson Farm Seed presents Ag Week TV every weekend. Ag News expert Shauna Olson, trusted meteorologist John Wheeler, and the expertise of the entire Ag Week staff will bring you the latest in Ag News, lifestyle, experts, tech, and trends. If it's important news to you, it's important news to us at Ag Week TV. Ag Week TV, delivering the complete Ag picture every weekend. Say goodbye to expensive window treatments and Saturdays filled with dusting. Minn Kota Windows offers blinds between the glass and select window styles and sliding patio doors. With low E glass, they're even more energy efficient. They're easy to operate, have a clean, efficient look, and control privacy, light, and heat. And the best part is they're safe for kids and pets. Blinds between the glass from Minn Kota Windows. Midwest built, Midwest tough, guaranteed for life. Minn Kota Windows, windows for your This is your livelihood, and success requires a seed partner that's just as committed as you are. Just like you, we're farmers first, so our values are rooted just as deep, and our goals are just as strong. Our team is ready to hit your fields, so no matter what each growing season brings, we'll get through it together. It's who we are. Thunderseed, first in the field. Welcome back, everybody. Bison Media Blog pregame show live outside the Dome on this chilly Friday leading you up to NDSU and Richmond. Three years ago, we were a bit further away, Colpac, when the guy on my right donned a cap and gown on graduation day because the Bison were graduating against the triple option when they beat Georgia Southern. I'm only curious about what you're going to bring out for us later in the show. No cap and gown. No cap and gown? I'll guarantee you there will not be a cap and gown involved unless Colpac has one. That was one of my favorite outfits he's done. There, are, the nine, there are nine Bison yeah. players who went through graduation this morning. I look over the camera here over in the fans. They've got squash the spiders. How does NDSU do that tonight? What in your mind the biggest key for the Bison if they want to win this game? I think it all starts with the defensive line again. I think it starts with Greg Menard, Tangaway. Kyle Laletta is not a scrambler. No. He's not a runner. He doesn't have very many yards this year uh, on the ground. They can't give him time. If they make life tough for him, especially the way they can come off the snap, the silent count, if you can anticipate that, 
I think that's going to be the biggest key. You know what you can't count on from him, Big E? He's thrown 13 picks this year, so he has really been prone to turn the football over. Yeah, I think it's going to come down to turnovers. More than that, I think NDSU's offense has to do a little bit more. The first two games, if you count the extra points, 30 points have been either defense or special teams with that safety. I think NDSU's offense is going to have to be account for you know a couple touchdowns or more because I think Richmond will score a little bit of points. So I think Easton Stick, he's done well, but he may have to make that one big play similar to what Montana, whether it's a run play or a pass game play. What about for Richmond on the flip side? What do they need to do to get a win here tonight? Maybe we don't handle the crowd for one thing. I mean, this week, how they practiced against the silent count was in their basketball yeah. arena and turning up the noise. Because finals were in Richmond, they didn't want to bother campus, so they couldn't use their there stadium for that. Robert Morris did way back when. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. If you could take that and then transfer it over to right. this house, uh, that's going to be a big deal. I'm curious to see how they come out of that because every team says we're prepared for it, but until you actually hear it on first and second and then eventually third down, that's what it really affects teams. We don't know. Maybe they will be ready. We don't, we don't know. They don't know. Nobody knows until they get in the... You have to get in the atmosphere before you know how you're going to deal with it. And I think the key for Richmond is just be balanced. Get your receivers involved. Get the running game involved. And, and just kind of do what you've done to get to this point. And again, just they have to avoid the early turnover, I think, because you don't want to be playing catch up in this building. I will say real quick, status of special teams, if this is a close game, Camp Peterson's missed four field goals in a row. Does Chris Kleiman go to Ben LeCompte if it comes down to that? That's a great question. I think Ben LeCompte, he's a season 50-year guy. We know what he can do. Yeah. If it's 30 yards or in, I wouldn't be surprised. Should be fun to watch. We'll come back, we'll update the injuries on the Bison roster. Still to come, our predictions as well. It's really up to kick off the Bison and the Spiders. Back live right after this. This is your livelihood, and success requires a seed partner that's just as committed as you are. Just like you, we're farmers first, so our values are rooted just as deep and our goals are just as strong. Our team is ready to hit your fields, so no matter what each growing season brings, we'll get through it together. It's who we are. Thunderseed, first in the field. More plays, more coverage, more sports. Stay ahead of the game. Get your sports fix with Sports Sunday. Sunday nights at 1035. Sports Sunday is brought to you by Nelson Auto Center in Fergus Falls. The specialists are so important because they're the ones that can take your team from average to great. The guys that have their specialized roles and understand them and do them really well, um, those guys are hard to find. And so when you have those guys that are good at what they do and believe in what they're doing, don't care too much about who gets the credit and want to go out and prove something. I think that that is probably the most important ingredient in a successful team. Choose the experts. Choose Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. The Media Blog Injury Report brought to you by Sanford Orthopedics. Back with our Sanford Health Injury Update. <laughs> There's only one guy that everybody wants to know about, Jeff, and I'm sure you have the answer to this. Is Carson Wentz's status. We're now nine weeks out from the wrist breaking. Well, how does my thumb look? I mean, that's about <laughs> as much as I know about Carson Wentz's thumb. It's, you know, you know what the uh, injury update is really interesting this time of year. And there Normally isn't it'd be much, a laundry list of there's guys. There's hardly yeah. anything to talk about. Yeah, it's really interesting how healthy this team is as opposed to last year because Kleiman told us this last year they were just trying to hang on with guys like Little John Beck was already out of the lineup. Peagle. Dudzik, Emmanuel, and that's not the case right now. When you want to talk about injuries, everybody's nicked up. Yeah. Carson Wentz is the major one. We've seen it throughout this playoff one. Jeff didn't want me to bring it up, but Chase Morlock, you've seen him get healthier and healthier. Chase Smith and others. And I, I just think it's who's less banged up and who, who can just gather that one last burst of, of energy or whatever he had left. And then that's where I think we're being at home. It's a team. It, it gives you that little extra burst of emotion or if there's a little bit of maybe something physically hurting you, I think maybe that gives you that extra lift. You know, I was going to ask you that. How much can, for Richmond, traveling again, second straight week, how much can that affect them, if at all? Well, I, I mean, that's, that's got to have some effect, maybe. I, 
and they came in Wednesday too. That's a long time yeah. to be, you know, preparing for a game. They said they want to get acclimatized to things. I'm not sure what that meant, but the central time zone. Probably. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Um, walking from the bus to the hotel and the cold temperature. <laughs> I don't know. Granted, they don't have to play outside. Yeah. When we come back, we'll do our predictions for tonight and tomorrow's game because we'll know who will play for the FCS championship. That's next, right after the break here on the Media Block pregame show, live from outside the dome. The specialists are so important because they're the ones that can take your team from average to great. The guys that have their specialized roles and understand them and do them really well, um, those guys are hard to find. And so when you have those guys that are good at what they do and believe in what they're doing, don't care too much about who gets the credit and want to go out and prove something, I think that that is probably the most important ingredient in a successful team. Choose the experts. Choose Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. This is your livelihood, and success requires a seed partner that's just as committed as you are. Just like you, we're farmers first, so our values are rooted just as deep, and our goals are just as strong. Our team is ready to hit your fields, so no matter what each growing season brings, we'll get through it together. It's who we are. Thunderseed, first in the field. For over 60 years, our focus has been you. A growing community needs a news source that grows with them. And you found that source in WDAY. Good evening, everyone. Our 6 p.m. newscast has been with you night after night. When the city comes to life or when news happens, you'll know. Dana Mock, Kirsten Keeley, out in the community, behind the desk. This had no major issues with users viewing offensive material. Two anchors you can trust. When the news hits, there's only one source to turn to. WDAY, the news leader. Welcome back, everybody. Everybody now waiting on pins and needles for Big E's prediction, which we'll get to in a second. But first, prediction for tomorrow's game. The oh, oh, just typical WWE. It's oh, the Cole back out. already. Well, Kopak doesn't have anything wow, ever. I'm gonna help him out. Put it on your shoulder. <laughs> Learn how to get a prop, man. <laughs> All right, that, that's just part of the extravaganza. That's, part of it. that's coming up later. Let's first start with tomorrow's game. The Ohio Valley, your favorite conference in the semifinals for the first time since 1991. Jack State hosting Sam Houston tomorrow. This, this is a no-brainer. Sam Houston has played every round this tournament. Yeah. They didn't have a first round by. They're on the road. Jacksonville State is just too fast, especially at quarterback with Eli Jenkins. Man, he's good. I say this, a two, three touchdown really? game. I do. I have Jacksonville State winning as well. Maybe not by a, as many as that. I would not be surprised, though, if Sam Houston somehow pulls another upset and makes it back to Chris Rowe. I like I'm with Kopak. I just think it's just so much energy. You could see him last year when Sam Houston State played here. They ran out of gas. Just too much to yep, go on same their thing. own. Yep. You got a talented quarterback in Eli Jenkins, Jacksonville State. Here we go. Bison and Richmond, first ever meeting between the two schools. NDSU has never lost against a Colonial team. Richmond has never lost to a Missouri Valley team in the postseason. Big E, what do you got? Well, I think both schools know what they're playing for. So, you know, I've, I've been kind of in a headwear groove this postseason. Oh! I'm bringing back the Tom Landry cap. <laughs> Tom Landry invented the 4-3 defense, in case you didn't know, and the winner of this game is going to go into his backyard. What he did is he moved the nose guard off the uh, off the, uh, off the center and back two yards and kind of invented the middle linebacker, a guy by the name of Sam Huff. NDSU has a pretty good uh, middle linebacker, Nick DeLuca. I think NDSU has to be Tom Landry tough today, and if they can do that, They'll make another trip to Frisco. The defense will play just well enough for NDSU. I see a 24-17, and I think Dom is it's going to be heading south again for NDSU. Tom Landry tough, another hashtag created here by Big E. The Bison running backs have been steady all season long. King Frazier's going to go over 1,000 yards to get NDSU for a 13th straight year with a 1,000-yard rusher. I think three of them have big days today. I think the Bison rushing attack gets NDSU back, and they force another turnover to win this game 27-17. Well, first of all, thanks to the Fargo Beer Club Absolutely. for hosting us. Absolutely, another great job. And as you know, we have an extra man on set we here today, the, interesting the most man of the interesting world. man. I think today is going to, NDSU is going to have an extra man too. It's called the 12th man. Yeah. The crowd is going to be the major difference today. I think the Dome is worth what, 10 points? I think 10. I think that's the difference right there. The Bison went 28-16, and the most interesting man is going to Frisco. And you're going to. I have the belt. I think you're gonna go give me the belt. Yeah, that seems about right. 
We'll be live with Chris Kleiman at 5 o'clock on WDAY. Our live blog starts at 6 o'clock. Of course, come back on the Bison Media blog. About 11.30 tonight, we'll wrap things up on the post-game show. For Eric Peterson and Jeff Kulpak, I'm Dom Izzo. We'll see you guys after the game. NDSU in Richmond for a spot in Frisco.